I want to talk about uh, one of our long-term projects. So, so mostly up to now in our in class, we have module week two, module week three, module week four, right like that, right going forward, and that's how most of our stuff will be. However, we do have an assignment that's going to be overarching, that's going to go over basically the rest of the semester, and so that will be in a different module. So that won't that there might be stuff to do in a given week, but it won't necessarily show up in our in our week. 10 module or whatever, okay? And so we're starting that this week. And so this is our species assessment. Now historically, I've had you guys do um, papers and you each individually write up a big paper. But I'm gonna try something different this year, which hopefully you guys will find more enjoyable and perhaps more useful, is you guys are gonna do a species poster, okay? So you're still, this is still a technical piece of communication. This is still a, a you know, rigorous thing, but we're working on incorporating more, more visual stuff as well as with the written, the written um, content, okay? So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna start, we're gonna start to pick, uh, pick which species you guys wanna work on. So I just wanna go over real, real generally what, what, we're, what we're talking about. So you're gonna tell us about the status of some critter, some organism, some species, that exists in California. It might also exist outside California, but it, it exists at least in California as well. And you're gonna tell us about it. So they're gonna start off with something about the basic natural history of this critter, right? How long it lives and, and, you know, and, and getting a sense of, uh, you know, whatever. You know, the places that it's habitat, where it resides and all that kind of stuff. So for example, we've had a bunch of rain uh, so far this winter, and we're going to have a fantastic super bloom all around regions of, of the high desert and everything starting in the next few weeks, which is cool. And so, you know, if, if we were doing something on, say, the California poppy or whatever, we could, we could, you know, the natural history would include something about a big picture, big, big context. Hey, it's a flower that has these colors that lives about this many years, you know, that, that kind of stuff. And then you'll also want to get a sense of what the conservation, the management threats are to this critter right now, this year and in the upcoming years. And so in this case, we see, um, so maybe we're still writing about poppies and poppies are cool and everything. Clearly one of the biggest challenges for these folks has been, and this was, this was really made apparent in 2019, just before the start of the pandemic. Um, uh, but it was, we, there was another year of really, really good rains and all these fantastic, wonderful, blooming uh, wildflowers. The seed bank responded to all this huge amount of water. And they're like, yo, let's bloom. And that was great. But then we got instances like what's going on here on the right, which is all these folks going out to the desert in, in various places where there are not parking facilities, not maybe dedicated trails, and people just walking all over the place, trampling, stepping on stuff, causing fragmentation, just all kinds of issues. And so, uh, you know, Wall Street Journal talked about that. This is lower left is this one from The Guardian. And now, and so, so okay, so that's an example. Okay, so there's some challenges, right? So here's some of the challenges. Challenges could be um, a very conspicuous one thing, or it could be a an, an aggregate of a bunch of things going on, right? So we're gonna get a sense of well, what are the issues that might be a problem for this organism going forward. Here are your candidates, this is also on, on our assignment, so, that, so this is for you guys to, to look at, but I just wanted to real quickly run through this. So we had, these are all possible things for you guys to, to select from. Mostly common names, in some case I put the, there, there isn't a really widely used common name, so I just used the, um, the Latin name. The um, uh, uh, beige colored text here is something that natively existed in California. The pinkish colored text are things that have been introduced. So these are things that were not here before humans started messing with them. So we call them an introduced species or an exotic species or an invasive species. More on that when we get to those terms later in the semester. But, um, and, and some of these are marine, some of these are freshwater, some of these are terrestrial. So, you know, so the idea here is, um, I want you guys to look over these things, a list, and see which ones are interesting to you. And then this, this first assignment is just for you to tell me, which one would you, are you most interested in? 
which one are you next most interested in? Which one are you third most interested in? And, and I'll, I'll, I'll figure out who's doing what based on your guys' interests, right? So rather than me assigning you one, in years past I've given, I've put them all in a hat and had people pick out, and, but this, we'll try it this way. See how this works, okay? So uh, just real quickly, uh, so we have uh, abalone, white abalone, uh, the first endangered uh, marine invertebrate in the US, white abalone. Um, red, and then red abalone is a much more common one. California lobster, California spiny lobster, blue whale, grizzly bear. Grizzly bear currently, we have grizzly bear in California, but they're all in, in, in zoo settings and things like that. The last native grizzly bear was, was killed in 1923 and is stuffed in, and in an exhibit case up in the California Academy of Sciences in, the Gold, in Golden Gate Park up in San Francisco. But, um, but we do have grizzly bear here, here now, but they're mostly in a controlled setting. They're all in a controlled setting. Um, uh, Black-tailed deer, uh, Joshua tree, um, currently being debated as to whether we turn into an endangered species or not. <clears throat> Pronghorn, an ungulate up in the mountains. Salt cedar, which is a, um, a plant in the desert. Uh, great blue heron, uh, brown pelican, ring-tailed cat. We actually have populations of ring-tailed cat in the Santa Monica Mountains. People don't really realize that. Um, it's not a cat, but it's called cat. Uh, coyotes, uh, black oak, uh, purple urchin, um, Garibaldi, the, our state marine fish, uh, as adult, bright, bright, all 100% bright orange. As a baby, bright orange with blue iridescent spots on its tail. Uh, Louisiana crayfish, um, people, some of these people call, call it crawfish, crayfish. Um, uh, if people are really trying to make a lot of money out of it, they'll call it uh, like langustino or something. <laughs> Something crazy. Uh, desert tortoise, another endangered species. Um, Humboldt squid, big, big, large squid that historically was only in Southern California, but now is throughout Northern and Central California with climate change. Uh, Red-tailed hawk, Pacific tree frog, Northern pike, a fish, American badger, um, a Chinese mitten crab, uh, common raven, salt marsh bird's beak, which is a, an endangered bird that's in our, our salt marshes uh, here in Southern California. Um, uh, Pismo clam used to be a massive fishery. Now it's pretty much collapsed. It's beginning to recover, but um, our friends up at, at San Luis Obispo are working on that. Erodium secutarum, which is a weed, a common weed, um, introduced with the missionaries. Uh, common earthworm. People think that earthworms are, uh, earthworms are, we do have native earthworms, but the thing that you see everywhere is an introduced uh, earthworm that was not natively here. Uh, bighorn sheep. Sargassum muticum, an invasive brown alga, uh, marine thing. Argentine ants, these are mostly when people say we have ants invading our house, this is mostly what's invading your house. Um, Western diamondback rattlesnake, El Segundo uh, blue butterfly, an endangered butterfly. Gypsy moth, a pest crop, um, or, or a pest on crops. California sea lion, pompous grass, uh, two, there's actually two species there, Celawana and Jubata, you could choose to do on either. Um, Arundo donax, which is our giant reed that's in our, our waterways, our riparian corridors. Blue gum, which is eucalyptus, California redwood. Long jawed mudsucker, small fish in our, um, in our estuaries. Um, island loggerhead shrike, bird. Uh, devil's hole pupfish, a, a small fish restricted to little water bodies in the desert. Uh, quagga mussels, an invasive, uh, a marine, uh, invasive freshwater mussel. Um, vernal pool fairy shrimp. Um, this is a species that I worked on for my PhD. That its name has changed, I don't know how many times, seven times since I did my PhD on it. Um, and is basically a, 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 a big turban snail, a marine turban snail. California gnat catcher, uh, bird in our Southern California communities here, very important for development uh, and controversies around that. African clawed frog, an introduced thing. A chemise, a plant in our hillsides. California poppy, another plant. <clears throat> Island fox. Uh, Norway rat, introduced all around the world. Um, giant kelp, eastern fox squirrel, um, which is our most common squirrel. Um, uh, our, the, our native squirrels are the gray squirrel. There's a couple others, but mostly it's the gray squirrel in our, in our area. The one we mostly see with the red, be well, kind of rusty belly, kind of brownish belly, that's, a, that's an invader. That, that, that's eastern fox squirrel. California sea otters, um, uh, Clarkia, a, a, a cool plant. Um, bobcat, uh, quaking aspen tree, uh, Pacific sardine fish. Western ringneck snake, western pond turtle, um, Adrena uh, uh, samosta, thresher shark, Pacific cord grass, uh, western uh, bat, mastiff bat, uh, Virginia possum, Brazilian pepper trees, which are all across campus, right? Those are mostly in the central mall. Those are Brazilian pepper trees mostly. 
Badalaria is an introduced snail in our estuaries. Um, uh, Arroyo toad, great best, uh, bristlecone pine, uh, shrimps in our uh, estuaries and wetlands, um, elderberry beetles, um, tiger beetles on our, on our sandy beaches, California carpenter bees, a solitary bee, native, native bee, and Santa Ana River woolly star, which is a rare plant, now a rare plant. Can we choose our own if it's not on the list? Um, uh, if you want to choose your own, you guys come talk to me. Yeah, but, but I, uh, I prefer you guys pick one of these if you can, but, but you can always propose something if you want. Okay, make sense? Okay. So I'll go over the poster in a sec, but basically the poster structure is you guys do have freedom. You don't have to stay exactly to these sections, but um, you have to at least have these, this content in there, right? So an abstract, we're just gonna be a brief one paragraph summary of, of, your, of your species. Natural history, so something about the natural history, right? Whether you give us a lot or a little is gonna depend on your particular critter, if it needs more explanation or more context or, or something critical to understanding its management kind of thing. Something about the abundance and distribution back in the day, before we really started tweaking it, now and in the future. So th those, those times can fluctuate a little bit, but I don't just want you to tell me what it's like now. So before humans started screwing with stuff, what were they like? Um, recent past, you can call recent past something like World War II, you know, something like that, 1950s, you know, th that, that kind of ish time. Current, meaning now or in the last few years. And then future. And then, you know, what, what, you know, presumably, hey, this thing's looking okay, this thing's looking like it's stable, not worried about it, think we're, as long as we keep doing what we're doing, it should be okay, or oh my gosh, if we keep doing what we're doing, this thing's gonna be extinct, or, or have its size or whatever. Abundance is how many individuals are around. Distribution is geographically where they're located. And for here, I'm talking California. So geographically, not, you don't have to spend time doing the whole planet. It's just like, hey, for the state of California, wh wh where, would these, where were these critters? Where uh, might they be? And then, of course, the conservation challenges. Oh my gosh, people are hunting these things to extinction. Oh my gosh, people are uh, 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 climate change is changing the, the rainfall pattern and this critter needs a lot of rain to, you know, whatever it is, whatever it is. And then some, some takeaway. You have, you have to make a decision here. So the first parts of this are mostly you reporting what other people found, right? This last part, you have to make a call. You have to make some recommendation. Even if it's to keep things as is, you have to make a judgment call. And we'll, we'll check that out. We'll evaluate that. Um, so, so that's the, the intellectual structure of stuff, right? Um, you know, again, natural history can take lots of different forms. Uh, the distribution abundance, probably something like a range map, right? A distribution map, something like that. And so the first thing is just you guys hunt for them. Is there something from 2023 or 2021 or 2024? What, you know, probably not for every critter, but something close, right? Something close. Um, and, uh, and when we get to the stage, you, we can go back and forth. We, we can talk about how we might, might uh, you know, fill in the gaps of some of these things. Um, challenges. So in this case, this is looking at the, this is, in this case, this is a clearing that's then populated by a uh, illegal marijuana farm in a national park. So in this case, hey, maybe it's illegal activities that's, that are what is threatening this plant. In other cases, maybe it's regular normally permitted, totally practice people do every day of the, of the year, right? It's gonna, it's gonna depend on the critter, it's gonna depend on the context. And then the conclusions and recommendations, this is what we should do. We, we should probably create more restorations so we can have more of these plants in the restorations and have more of them or, or whatever, um, however it's gonna work. Okay, roughly this is what we're gonna do. So this week we're gonna pick our topic, or excuse me, pick our species. Then you guys are gonna make some, find some references. You might need many references, but this first pass is just three. Just three. Um, now, the gold standard for our references are peer-reviewed sources, right? Or sources where we've, we've, we've gotten, um, we've gotten uh, uh, you know, somebody published this and they worked really hard and they had other people review it, it's been evaluated, all that kind of good stuff. But in some cases, we, you might also have more like guidebooks 
and, and, and agency reports, and those are okay as well. But, but so, so first step, we're gonna pick our topic. Second step, we're gonna start getting some background sources of information on this, right? And then we're gonna do an outline. So this outline is not meant to be like exact perfect form. It's just, hey, let me start filling in these different sections, right? And, and see where I, see how things are going to be start shape, shaping out. We will have our first complete draft of our poster after spring, basically do you know spring break time, essentially. Then we'll work on giving each other detailed feedback on the individual what 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 what, what you guys are producing. You guys will produce a final version of the poster, and then we will more formally evaluate it. And then you guys are going to do an oral presentation on, on the information that, you, uh, that you, you gleaned and learned. A brief, brief, well, like four or five minute presentation, not, not very long. Um, which will have these same elements. The key aspects of natural history, the key aspects of how the critter's distribution has changed, et cetera. Okay? And we'll go over all that. Um, I, I do want to say though, when we do these things, whatever thing is due, whatever week, outline, complete draft, whatever. Draft does not mean half-ass. Draft does not mean kind of took a sort of stab at it. Draft means you actually go do it, right? Draft in the sense that it's, we're not done and we get it. We're going to make some changes and stuff, but, but don't submit a draft that has like an abstract and nothing else, for example, right? So everything is always complete when we submit it. It's okay that you're gonna be, uh, we get it, that you're gonna be adding stuff to it, but it can't, you, you can't leave stuff out and say, oh, it's just a draft, I just, you know, no, 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 no. Everything is always complete when we submit stuff for this assignment. Cool? Okay, so this is, um, you guys can download this. This is our poster template. We're not, we're not working on this first you know, week or two or three, so we're not going to talk about it specifically just yet, but you guys all have this. So let me explain what this is. So this is a starter point, right? This is a starting place. You're welcome to start to change things up however you like, right? As long as we have those, those key, that key content in there. Um, but this is, this is a starter. So this is the right size. These fonts are the correct size and, and so on and so forth. So that this is a, a something you can copy and then you start to replace stuff or type stuff in, okay? Understanding that you guys are gonna, it, it's not gonna look exact, everybody's poster is gonna be a little bit different, right? Or, or it might be a little bit different. So what is this? This is a single slide. So this is a PowerPoint file that you can download and then start to manipulate. Uh, so some of these things are just inserted images. Oops, sorry. Oops. So some of these things are just inserted images. Some of these things are, are, are tables. Some of these things are, are, are blocks of text. Right? So um, this looks like it's a slide. If I look at one of my lectures, this looks like it's a slide. But if I come up here and go to page setup, and I click this, the way I do my slides, my slides for you guys, for our, most of our lectures, in-class lectures, and individual slide, this thing you're seeing here, this element of the, of the file, is 13 inches by eight and a half inches. If you download and open up our poster template, and do that same thing, and I come up here and I go page setup, how big is this slide? It's one slide, but it's 48 inches wide, by 36 inches tall. So it's four feet wide by three feet tall. Uh, this is sized to be able to be printed like a regular professional poster. So even though visually it might look like, oh, okay, here's uh, Jose Dolphin or whatever the hell, and it might look like, but when I click, when I look at this size of the font, it says it's 54, right? So, so because this is a poster that's designed to be you know, made in the real world big, this template is sized in the real world sizes. Why that matters, I'll just say that, that when you grab graphical elements, it might look okay on this. If you got like a cheap little small scanned in distribution map from Google or something, and you threw it on here, you're like, ah, oh, that's cool, it looks good. 
it, it may well not be good. And so we'll go over this when we get farther on. But the point is, this is a slide. Save this, archive this, save this. But, um, but, but just realize it's not a generic on-screen slide, uh, on screen slideshow that you might be used to. The last thing I'll say with regards to just the logistics of this is um, uh, you, are, you will turn in this to me. You will turn in a, a PowerPoint slide file and a PDF to me for the final thing when we go to do re peer review and stuff. Some of you guys will grab this, it's a PowerPoint file, and upload it into your Google Drive and convert it to a Google slide, which is totally it's, you know, easy to do. Um, I'd say be careful with that. So you're, you, you can do that, but that oftentimes will cause us some issues in the translating back and forth. Normally, Google Slides for doing, you know, collaborating on something and typing in some text, great, no problem. Throwing in a simple photo of your headshot for introducing people across class, not a problem. But for something like this, a big high resolution poster, it can sometimes cause problems. So that's not saying not to do it, but that's just saying, if you use anything other than PowerPoint, you might have some issues. That's not to say you can't, but you might have some issues. Realize that all of our, if you guys perhaps don't have Microsoft Office on your computer, you, I believe you all can get it. But, it, but if, you, if you don't have Microsoft Office on your computer, all of our campus computers have Microsoft Office. So if you want to work on a draft version of this in Google Slides or something like that, and then when you're getting ready to the point where you're starting to get it ready to submit or what have you, you can go to the library, you can go to the um, uh, you know, El Dorado Hall, you could go to whatever and, 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 and access PowerPoint on there. So I just wanted to, to make sure I really reiterate that this, is, this template will work best with PowerPoint and PowerPoint's the most sophisticated tool for doing this. Google Slides are nowhere near as elegant or powerful or, or useful. Um, and so I just wanna make sure you guys all heard me. 